Hello, so please do like and subscribe if you aren't already. So in today's video, I am going to focus really on a collage and collage papers that I'm just pulling together for the Ramshackles project. And you will have known that I've sort of started some drawings and I've done some backgrounds for some Constantina sketchbooks. But now I'm going to need much more paper because I'm going to be starting and developing the paintings. And so what I'm doing is kind of coordinating, kind of organising that. And I usually, for a particular series, I usually pull papers together and then generate, in addition to using stash that I've already got, I then tend to add to it with uh, new papers that I think are sort of reflective really of the subject matter. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. And I just thought before I started doing that over on the desk, that it will be useful for me to just remind you, I've, I've talked about this before, but I have a home studio. So I just wanted to sort of share how I organize my papers. And it's not ideal, and I think whatever system you have, often you chop and change and try different things because it's really hard to keep organised with collage papers. So what I have, and just to share with you, is I just have these drawers uh, in this shelving unit and I have them broadly sort of divided. So in this top one, I've got uh, the tissue paper, the pattern paper, um, all sorts of buff coloured neutral papers and tissue papers so they're all in there so in the next drawer uh, I have all sorts of different co coloured papers now ideally really I'd want them in separate boxes so it kind of gets into quite a muddle so what I have is I have different colours so this one as you can see is a sort of a bluish folder and I have them clipped together it's not ideal and as soon as I get a load of different papers of the same colour, then I'm struggling with space. So it's how I do it now. So I've got all different colours in different clamps. So I've got red, I've got green, I've got buff coloured all of the way uh, through the, the colour spectrum. And then in this one, I've got all of my text papers, dictionary pages. I've even got a dictionary in here, actually, you know, the, the craziness of it all. And different things that I've collected. So that's in there. So that's how I do it. Lots of people do different things, all sorts of creative ideas. But for me, for space, that's how I'd started doing it in here. And I've sort of continued with that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the desk and, and broadly show you how I coordinate it for my ser a series of work. So I thought I should just share with you this basket. It's just to be practical, really. If I have papers everywhere, I soon get in the right muddle and then... I, I end up being very restricted in, in the papers that I use. So I have have this uh, basket that I just got in a second hand store, actually, that I just put the things that I'm, you know, the, the papers for the particular series. So in this case, the ramshackles in. So broadly, what I do is I kind of try and organise it a little bit. So what I've got is I've got black and white papers. And these are drawings that I did of the ramshackles that didn't work out, that didn't make it through to being um, framed. So these are just a whole mixture and I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to be quite useful and I've got some magazine pieces as well. These are coloured papers and some of these I created with the gel plate uh, for using for the background for the collage Constantinas that I started, but I've not got enough of them. And I've got some other things mixed in with them, some magazines, some other painting pieces, some uh, decoupage, some other, other uh, bought papers and so on. So just a mixture. As I'm flicking through, I just saw something I really like. I really like that. It's got a reminiscent of the ramshackles. I think it's because of the layering. Um, so that's, that's that. And then I've got uh, some text, different text, different magazines from when I was in the northeast, sort of different magazines, different size texts. And then in here, the reason I've got that separate is because it's just small bits and just somewhere to keep all those small bits together. But often small bits can be useful depending on the size you're working. And then these are my tissue papers uh, that I often use, some pattern paper, some napkin paper and so on. So I, I keep that kind of organised. I add to it and things change and, and evolve. But at least I've got somewhere where I can put the, all of the stuff together. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the gel plate to make some more pattern paper because that's really what I need and what I don't have uh, enough of at the moment. OK, so I'm going to start by um, doing some simple patterns on the on the paint. Uh, I should have opened up before I started, but doesn't actually need very much on the on the surface to get started because otherwise you just end up with too much 
that was verging on too much, but I think I might get away with it. So this is just a process of monoprinting. Lots of most people have heard of it, um, and it's just a, a sort of a block of gel. You just need to keep it clean, and you just wipe it with surgical spirit or something like that. Um, keep the brayer clean by sort of putting it onto some paper once you've done it. <clears throat> Getting some resistance there, it probably wasn't entirely clean. Anyway, I'll start by just uh, doing some patterning using this uh, corrugated paper. And I'm going to pull this print off using the deli paper, as you can see pulling that off and then cleaning the plate with some more deli paper. Now I'm using quinacridone uh, azo gold, nickel azo gold actually, and I'm using bubble wrap. And now I'm using deli paper again to pull off the print and some paper to pull off the rest of it. Now subsequently I'm using manganese blue. And of course it depends on the relative transparencies of these paints as to what effects you get using some different um, papers there to create that, that wavy line on there. So now I'm using the turquoise. I've added too much, so I'm having to clean off some of the paint. And then I'm using embossed paper to give you that lovely pattern. Pulling that off with some of the copy paper. Cleaning the embossed paper. Now I'm using the quidacridone nickel azo gold again. This is very transparent actually, so you can see that it mixes with the turquoise to create that green colour. Okay, so this time I am using uh, turquoise and an orange, and I'm using the going to use the sequin waste to create a masking. Cleaning the brayer, using brown paper this time, so pulling off so that you get a solid turquoise block onto the brown paper. I'm just going to clean it with some uh, deli paper, so pulling off the rest of that turquoise. Now I'm going to use Vat Orange. Uh, this is my uh, replacement for Cad Orange actually, and it's rather a lovely burnt orange colour. And uh, spreading that over the plate now. This is, looks to be quite opaque actually, as is the turquoise. Now what I'm doing is I'm placing the sequin waste on, and it will act as a mask. So when I push the paper over, the dots, the holes through of orange will print over the turquoise. You do need to smooth it down quite a lot so that you get the proper imprint. So it needs to be properly rubbed, pressed down as you can see. I'm pulling it now and you can see the orange dots. There we are. Now I'm removing the sequin waste and I'm going to clean that plate using some paper, more brown paper. And you can see that that gives a, a nice print as well. So on the right hand side is the one that you saw me do, which is the turquoise first. Uh, followed by the orange, so they're the orange dots. And on the left hand side, I did one in reverse. So I put the orange down first and uh, then the turquoise uh, with the sequin waste and you can see the difference. So uh, these are the papers that I created in just under, under an hour. So it's not too bad at all, is it really? So uh, just, a, just a quick whiz through. Uh, these are the papers that I created um, just by cleaning the brayer. So useful collage from that. Uh, these were done with just a single uh, thing to make the patterns. In, in that top case, that was corrugated paper. This was done with two things and often two colours. And you get interesting effects like that. This was done using a stencil on the paint and just playing around with the, the way I layered it and changing the colours and the order of the colours and so on. And this was done with the sequin waste. So you can see the rich effects you get with the brown paper against the deli paper and the, just the copy paper. So that's really interesting. I will be going into this in more detail and, it, but it, and creating papers will be part of my online course that I'm developing about collage and creative collage approaches. 
so if you're interested in that, watch out for that. Make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter because that's where I'll inform people so that you can sign up specifically to hear more about it. And also a couple of things coming up. Uh, Art in the Barn, if you're local to Cheshire next weekend, I'd love to see you. I'll put a link in the notes. And also uh, just pop along uh, over and follow me on Pinterest if you're interested in Pinterest posts. So thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'd love to hear your comments and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.